Good day mga Karil Talk and today we are talking about owning a car. Now for those who are not aware, um, although the pandemic has brought us a lot of misery and um, hardship for some people, luckily may mga tao in the BPO industry who were able to retain their jobs and some of them are actually thriving, especially those industries na in demand for people who are working from home so yun may mga accounts na nagta-thrive right now and also customer service and um, to tell you honestly I was told by somebody uh, by a dealer na this is the best time for BPO and calls and agents to get a car to get a car loan now it's no secret na hirap tayo makakuha ng credit cards. A lot of banks, a lot of uh, financial institutions don't trust us that much and I'm sure for some reason. Pero this time since maraming industry, maraming tao ang unstable ang trabaho for now. Uh, may we have a higher chance of getting approved for auto loans, housing loans, and credit cards. And I believe this is the best time for all of us. If you think you really need it at this moment. Now I've had this car for a month and I'm gonna share to you all uh, the downsides. Now I understand that, that this may sound too negative for some people. Come on, let's keep a little optimism. But this is, well, the channel is about real talk. So, real talk tayo. We'll talk about the cons and the expectations that you need to prepare yourself with, especially financially, because it's not a joke. Now, I prepared myself before getting a car. Actually, three months na akong shop around for a car. And until I finally decided which one to get. And within those three months, actually even prior, I've been thinking a lot about the expenses and what I need to be prepared for. So, I don't know realization and uh, for some, this may be common sense, but it's not. You wouldn't understand really until you're in that situation. So, on this, um, so on this episode, we'll give you the sex... What? <laughs> So in this episode, we'll give you the six things that you should prepare yourself for before getting a car. And unfortunately, there is no escape from these things. The moment na kumuha ka na sa sakyan, you have no choice but you face these realities. So stick around guys. And by the way, that uh, video that you saw on our introduction that was in Tanay and as soon as you get one uh, I suggest don't kayo mag break in ng car because it's really a nice place if you want to go if you don't want to go too far such as Tagaytay and Baguio so our tips are coming up right next Okay, so number one on our list of tips is, well, it's not what you think. Some of you would think na budget ang starting point. But for me, it's about purpose. You, need, you really need to understand what your purpose is for getting a car. If you're planning on switching to, um, switching careers from, from a BPO or from a call center worker to a TNVS, driver well that's um that's something to consider if you're a family of seven to ten that's also one thing to consider if you're single another thing of course kasi kung single ka especially for males importante ang forma um whether we uh we admit it or not syempre iba pa rin yung forma yung sasakyan at iba ang 
ang preference kapag gusto mo porma na sasakyan um, you probably would go for Toyota or Honda ganon um, so yun nga start with your purpose ano ba yung main purpose mo is it just a family car of four you can go for a hatchback it, you will save a lot of money by doing that now what I have is a sedan it's actually so yun, I think uh, this serves my purpose and my requirements. Kung 7 kayo, you should go for a uh, Navanza Expander. Kasi walang point na pilitin mong bumili sa sasakyan if, it not, if it's not gonna serve your purpose. If lagi kang overloaded, mas madali siya malalas pag, hirap ang makina mo. Um, of course, if you need a bigger car, that's a bigger budget. So that's why you start with your purpose. Ngayon, kung family man ka pero wala ka na masyado pakialam sa in-laws mo, gusto mo kailang family talaga lagi nakasakay, then you can go for a hatchback. The only difference is that um, with a 550,000 to 600,000 budget, you can get a decent hatchback. For automatic, um, I suggest you go as um, as I as 700,000 for budget on your budget if you're planning a hatchback um, car na high end medyo kompleto na sa specifications pero in terms of sedan full size sedan with trunk which means compartment at the back your 700,000 would only take you lower models of um, of sedans Huwag tayo mag-mention ng mga brands or ng mga manufacturers. Basta kung 700,000 ang budget mo, um, you can go for a hatchback na high-end or low-end na sedan with compartment at the back. So again, what is your purpose? Okay, Like me, I went for a full-size sedan because I guess I can also use the back compartment for deliveries because I'm also delivering food on weekends and um, yeah because of family na rin, which means that I can I can travel I can go out of town without having to worry where to put the extra extra baggage so yun ano ba yung purpose mo start with that and then of course number two is budget now you have to really really do the math here um i was an engineering student when i was in college and uh, trust me when i say the numbers don't lie kung hindi mo kaya wait it out kung hindi mo pa kaya kumuna sa sakyan ngayon um ipon pa i suggest mag prepare ka na ng 20 to 30 percent of the total suggested retail price of the car that you're aiming for for a down payment para hindi ka mahirapan sa, sa magiging monthly mo now why did I say earlier na this is the best time to to get a car for BPO's and call center agents kasi right now maraming industries ang in demand pa rin at mas naging in demand sa BPO industry at the same time this is the best time for you depending on your situation of course kung kumuku, kung nakakakuha ka ng bonuses each month na sa tingin mo is enough para ipambayad sa monthly na hindi mo na magagalaw yung yung basic pay mo then go for it if you think that you really need the car now go for it habang nasa magandang situation ka Unless of course if you can save that money then save it there's no there's no issue at all. Again, ang pinag-uusapan natin is just like what I stated earlier, kung kailangan mo na if you really need it now, then go for it. And I suggest kung kaya mong taasan yung monthly mo, paiklain mo yung yung terms mo. Instead of 5 years, go for 4 or 3 years. At that way, uh, hindi mo niloloko yung sarili mo na na kaya ko yung sasakyan, okay lang uh, mababa naman yung monthly, no kasi mas lumalaki yung binabayaran mo habang tumatagal yung terms mo and that money could have been saved for something else like who knows 
di ba? Baka nakapag-down ka pa sana ng bahay kung tinapos mo ng mas maaga yung payment term mo. I did my math and between um between 3 and 5 years na terms I I would have saved around 120 to 150,000. That can be that's that's money that could have been paid for a down payment for a house in Bulacan, Laguna, or Cavite, di ba? Instead of renting, or it could have been money used to start a business. So yun nga, um, the rule of thumb uh, according to banks is that it needs to be thirty uh, percent at least of your. Um, monthly income. So I think na approve nila ang household income na forty thousand, um, forty thousand monthly income. Pero pag lumabas lahat na expenses mo, and po kaya na magrelate sa computation nila, ikaw na lang ang magcompute sa sarili mo. Kasi ikaw naman nakakalam ng mga gastos mo. So if you can save up up to 30 40% of your monthly income at pasok yung 40% na yun or 30% na yun sa monthly amortization mo you're qualified. Now, qualified doesn't mean na kaya mong tapusin of course kasi nagbabago situation ng mga tao. Nagbabago yung ah uh, yung panahon. So ang idea doon is that kaya mo, qualified ka. Pero kung kaya mong i-maintain yun, hindi na alam ng banko yun eh. Ikaw na nakakaalam nun. That's why maingat sila sa mga BPO's and call centers kasi alam naman natin na nag- nagpo-pull out yung mga accounts at nawawalan tayo ng trabaho minsan. Pero, again, going back, this is the time sa ilang industries na kumuha na sasakyan kasi mas in demand tayo. Number three is expenses. Now, Siyempre, common sense na itong mag-asas But, nai-imagine mo ba kung magkano? You probably don't. Now, let's say for example that you're monthly, you have decided what you, the, the car that you wanna get and nakita mo na ito, kaya ko ito, 15,000 for the next 5 years. It doesn't end there. Uh, if you took a brand new car, of course, the registration is free. More probably for the next three years, your insurance is free for the first year. Depende sa agreement nyo ng bank or ng dealership. Pero after those free, uh, the expenses could easily rack up. Now, depende pa rin yun, uh, again, sa sasakyan na nakuha mo, if it's a basic car, um, probably maraming features na missing and you'll probably end up Um, you call it upgrading your car and that's an additional expense gas is an additional expense the problem with the car is that if it's brand new you'll have to use it more frequently because you need to find out if there's something wrong with the car so the only way to find out is mag break in ka the only way to find out is Paanda rin mo? I've had this car for 3 months. Uh, sorry, I've had this car for a month. And I so far only have 300 kilometers on my odometer. Um, ideally, dapat naka 1,000 ka na in your first month para ipacheck kung okay ba yung sasakyan at kung nagkakaproblema ba. Now, hindi mo naman kailangan magmadali pero the idea is still need to use the car. At pag ginamit mo yung sasakyan, it needs gas. Pag ginamit mo yung sasakyan kasama yung family mo, malamang kakaya kayo sa labas. Now, luckily, lockdown ngayon, so medyo limited ang movement ng mga tao at limited ang movement ko. Pero, if it's open season, kung walang lockdown, malamang nag-vehicle na ako or malamang nag-bagay na ako, tagaytay. See, uh, madaling mag-rack up yung mga expenses. And it's gonna be really sad. Um, no disrespect or no offense to mga walang budget, dahil hindi naman, hindi naman ako mayaman. 
Pero it's sad naman, di ba? Kung meron ka sasakyan, pero you can go anywhere because wala kang, wala ka ng budget sa gas. Or nangungutang ka, or you're taking loan just to buy gas and food. So again, it's not about being negative, guys. Um, the car gives a lot of things. Alam na natin yun. Peace of mind, safety. Um, it elevates your uh, your confidence about yourself. Not not towards other people, pero at least may naka-accomplish ka sa buhay mo, di ba? May nararating ka kahit konti. May naipundar ka kahit konti. Pero this is also about facing the things na, hindi, na baka hindi mo ina-expect. That's why we created this video in the first place anyway. Di ba? We're not also talking about the um, additional accessories yet like tint, um, sun visors, um, whatever, kung ano yung gusto mong i-add sa sakyan mo, probably new set of wheels uh, for looks, accessories, car seats, um, deep dish, new mattings, if hindi ka contento sa, sa free na ibinigay ng manufacturer mo, marami. Now, how will you get an idea about all of these things? Kapag nakapili ka na ng gusto mo sa sasakyan or kapag meron ka ng choices, I suggest you join Facebook groups. Para alam mo kung ano yung ina-upgrade nila, alam mo kung ano yung ginagawa nila sa sasakyan nila, masabi mo sa sarili mo kung kailangan ko ba ito, paghahandaan ko ba ito. Yes, I will get that kapag may car na ako. Kailangan ko ba ng ganito? Yes, mag-aabang ako sa lasaan ng sale. <laughs> diba? It, it's all about planning, guys. Actually, bumili nga ako ng accessories para sa ibang manufacturer kasi akala ko yun ang kukunin ko. Pero luckily, mura lang siya. Kasi nakuha ko siya sa 9.9 sale ng Lazada. So, it's still. By the way, car cover pa pala kung wala kayong garahe. Okay, next is finding the right dealer. Now, bakit kailangan pa natin pag-usapan to? Because maraming sinungaling sa kanila. At ito totoong hugot. Dahil this is based on experience. Somebody is selling a car and they will do everything to sell that car kasi malaki ang commission. And that's their source of income. And choosing a dealer and an agent is like is parang pagsagot sa taong naniligaw sa'yo. You may end up being fucked up or you may end up having a very good deal with somebody really honest. Simple lang yun. Parang may mga taong lalapit sa'yo na manloloko, mayroon taong seryoso at matino. So unfortunately, wala akong may bibigay na tips. Pero may may recommend akong agent. Um, I guess... I will post it at the end of this video kasi talaga recommended ko siya pero it, this again this is not a paid advertisement so I'm not getting paid for recommending her I just loved how our deal went so yun uh, check out nyo na lang sa end ng video kung sino siya para lang para makontakt nyo siya for for options ganun now going back um what you have to understand is um, getting a car is a business deal. Kapag maraming supply ang sasakyan na gusto mo, most likely agents ang maghahabol sa'yo. Kasi maraming supply, isa ka lang nag nagde-demand. So technically, malamang, hindi lang ikaw ang nag-iisang nagde-demand. Pero kung marami silang supply um, at hindi nila maibenta lahat, malamang um, you'll be able to break a deal or to get a deal na na pabor na pabor sa yon. At maliit yung chances na lolokohin kanila kasi importante sa kanila ang benta at nandya na yung unit. Now the other side of that coin is that kapag yung trip mong unit is limited, let's say ini import from other countries at marami kayong may gusto ng ganong unit malamang pipila ka and to be considered you'll have to shell out cash kailangan mo mag reserve usually down, 
uh, usually 5,000 pesos ang reservation fee. And bago nila ibigay sa'yo yung sasakyan, you have to pay the full down payment. Now, here's the catch. The problem is, minsan, pipila ka. Pero minsan, may mga agent na nagsisinungaling na sasabihin, nandyan yung unit, mag-down ka na. Pero in reality, wala naman. Now, sasabihin nila, eh, refundable naman ng down payment at reservation fee. Yes, it is refundable. Kasi by law, kailangan nila i-refund. The problem is, how long does it take? Kasi may refund pa ako sa isang car manufacturer. It's been almost two months. Hindi nila ako mabigyan ng sagot kung kailan lalabas yung refund ko. It's not a big amount. Pero, um, unfortunately, is paano? Pero paano yung mga tao na sakto lang ang pera? Na sakto lang ang pera for down payment. And then, sa dinis sabihin mo na pila ka muna. And then, kapag nagbago yung isip ng tao na kailangan ko ng sasakyan, dilipat na ako na ibang dealer, sabihin mo, sige, refund ka namin, pero hindi namin alam kung kailan mo makukuha. That's very unfair, especially sa panahon ngayon na pandemic, hindi naman madaling makuha ang pera ngayon. What if frontliner yung tao at kailangan niya na ng means of transportation? ba? So, yun lang yung warning ko sa inyo. Unfortunately, walang... Um, there's no easy way to tell you how to spot a lying agent. But I guess your best approach is go to the dealership, talk to them face-to-face para alam mo kung sino yung kausap mo. Alam mo kung sino yung babalikan mo kapag nagsinungaling sila or minislead ka nila. I'm not saying um, majority pero ang dami nila. Marami sa kanila na puro pangako. And huwag kayong makontento na sa Facebook lang sila kinakausap. Yes, you can start a conversation in Facebook and then punta kayo sa dealer. Preferably, yung malapit sa inyo kasi since limited ang movement ng tao at walang public transportation, you owe it to yourself na malapit yung dealer na kausap mo just in case na may problema. So, yun. The next on our list is hassle. Now, this is the main reason kung bakit very hesitant ako kumuha ng sasakyan. If you're getting a grab, if you're getting a taxi, it's as simple as booking, get on, get off, tapos na. And then vice versa pag uwi mo. You don't have to deal with accidents, minor or major, um, mga nagmumurang drivers dahil suddenly nakat off mo sila, mga abusive um, traffic enforcers, nahuhulihin ka kahit wala ka namang violation. Um, hindi pa natin pinag-uusapin yung pag-breakdown ng sasakyan mo, yung mga minor inconvenience. Um, kung wala kang parking, yung anxiety na okay ba yung sasakyan mo, hindi ba siya ginagasgasan. Um, now, I, this may sound ranting, I'm sorry. Um, ito lang yung mga bagay na nag-hold back sa akin for a very long time before getting a car. Kasi I don't like hassle because it takes too much time, especially if you get yourself in an accident na hindi mo naman kasalanan. And again, this is real talk and this is about setting your expectations. So, I'm sorry if this sounds too negative. Sorry, sorry talaga. So, yun, kasi kapag nagpa-repair ka, it costs money. You have to wait for approval from your insurance para mapa-repair yun. And then, iiwanan mo pa yung sasakyan mo sa kasa or sa shop. Depende kung gano'ng kagrabe yung damage. It could take as long as two days up to one week. Or kung major, hopefully wag naman sana, it could take up to months or three months. Imagine paying for a car monthly and not being able to use it so, simply because somebody was not paying attention or was drunk, too drunk to drive. Wala pa dito yung mga self-accident. Hopefully, hindi ka kamote rider and hindi ka kamote driver because they do exist. The last on our list is that a car is not an asset. It's a liability. It's an asset if, it, if it's your means to make money. Um, no, kapag service mo siya papunta, papasok, pa away, it's not, it's not an asset. It's a liability. Say you're paying for parking and the, the car is taking a chunk of your basic pay. That's not how it works. 
It is an asset if you have a fleet of car and you're a TNVS operator. It's your means to make money. If you're a taxi operator, that's your means to make money. If you're in the foods, uh, food, food service or food delivery service and your car is your means to deliver it for free and your car, your gas is getting paid for by the uh, by the profit that you make from that food business it's an asset yes other than that um, I firmly believe it's a liability now it, this is subject to debate of course and it's about perspective and it's a matter of opinion so if you have a different opinion again feel free to comment below para, para lang sa benefit again ng lahat ng nakaka, nakakanood nito but for me, it's really a liability. Generally, a car would um, would cost about nine hundred thousand after paying it for five years. Pero normally, ang resale value nun is around four hundred thousand pesos. So imagine the amount of money you lost. That's half a million. Now, hindi ko na specify kung anong car yon, kung ano yung resale value ng car. Pero it happens, there are times na ganun ang naging resale value ng car. Again, depende yun sa maraming factor. Uh, mileage, uh, condition of the car. Pero generally ganun, it loses half of its value. And you lose half of the money that you paid for it. So you have to make sure that you make the most out of it. That's it for this video. Thank you for sticking until the end. So, hindi ko na may mention yung model and make nung napili kong sasakyan but again, may sasuggest akong agent sa inyo if in case you're interested. Um, again, this is not an advertisement. I don't get any. I just love how the girl works. And I love the deal that she brokered for me. Um, kaya sinasuggest ko siya. And I hope you'll, um, you'll be pleased with the with the deal that, you, that she will offer you if in case you choose to contact her. Um, on our next video, I'll show you how I came up with the decision, how I chose this car. Um, we hope to see you on that video. And I'm sorry guys if the video is too negative, but again, uh, if it's worth it, yes, it's worth it having a car. Bakit? Kasi mas mabilis ang travel mo, less hassle of safe and family mo, this car has seven airbags. Yes! That's awesome! Hopefully, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to use it. But it's still great to know that you're safe when you're traveling. Um, that you have control over your safety and your family's safety. Um, na hindi ka nag worry kung nakakahilo ba mag-drive si manong taxi driver or maarte ba yung grab driver na bawal magpakain sa loob you have full control so it's really worth it on top of that um, of course wala naman guarantee na safe ka from COVID-19 unless um, mag, mag social distance ka 100% of the way but at least malaki yung na minimize yung risk mo from getting infected dahil lang may confined space ka and save ka sa sarili mong space. So I'm sure I don't have to tell you all of the good things of having your own means of transportation. It doesn't have to be expensive nga like what I said earlier. It can be just as basic as any car as long as it fits your needs. So again, thank you guys for watching mga Karil Talk and we'll see you on the next video on how to choose your first car. Drive safe.